Welcome to the NoosaCast YouTube channel. These Red Smith Banquet throwbacks are exclusive interviews of sports legends, powerful media personalities, and influential coaches. You won't find these anywhere else. Subscribe below and enjoy. Sig Wasaki from the Miller Brewing Company, who again, Sig and Miller Brewing Company, thank you for your support, will present the Nice Guy Award. Sig Wasaki. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our honoree this year has seen a lot as it relates to our national pastime. His 45th season in baseball, Roland Heeman has recently been named Senior Executive Vice President of Baseball Operations for the new Arizona Diamondbacks. Considered one of baseball's premier deal makers, Mr. Heeman is one of the more active participants in baseball's trade market. He has negotiated close to 140 trades involving more than 420 players during his lengthy baseball career. He concluded 17 trades in his first 17 months with the Orioles. A three-time winner of Major League Baseball's Executive of the Year Award, he has engineered four of the greatest turnaround, turnarounds in big league history, including the Orioles' 22-game improvement in 1992. Mr. Heeman was one of the principal architects of the Orioles' 32 and a half game improvement in 1989, the third greatest jump in Major League history. Mr. Heeman's baseball career began in 1951 when he joined the front office of the minor league Hartford Chiefs following a four-year tour of duty in the U.S. Coast Guard. At the end of the season, he was promoted to the parent Boston Braves, and in 1953, he accompanied the Braves franchise to Milwaukee. In 1960, former Braves manager Fred Haney became the first California Angels general manager, and less than a month later, Heeman joined him as scouting and farm director. After spending 10 years with the Angels, he was appointed director of minor league player personnel for the Chicago White Sox. In his first two full seasons with the White Sox, Heeman and manager Chuck Tanner combined to bring the Sox out of the cellar to third place in 1971 and second place in 1972. In 1973, Mr. Heeman became vice president in the John Allen administration and worked with Bill Veck from 1975 until 1981. After Jerry Reinsdorf and Eddie Einhorn purchased the franchise from Veck, they promoted him to executive vice, vice president of baseball operations. Mr. Heeman earned his second top executive of the year trophy in 1983 after his White Sox won the Western Division by a record 20 games. In 1986, he left the White Sox to join the commissioner's office and remained there for two seasons before joining the Baltimore Orioles. The list of Mr. Heeman's accomplishments is lengthy and distinguished. These accomplish accomplishments qualify Mr. Heeman to join the distinguished list of past award recipients. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce one of the most respected men in Major League Baseball and our 1996 Miller Nice Guy Award recipient, Mr. Roland Heeman. Thank you very much, Seg. I didn't realize that I've been around that long. I tell you, when I got the call from Dan Ornstein in uh, early October about the fact that he told me that I would be honored tonight here in Appleton if I so chose. Well, believe me, it didn't take me long to accept. And the follow-up calls from Mike Reese, very heartwarming to have dear friends remember you after you haven't been around this area for quite some time. And I assured them that I would come in the night before so as to avoid any inclement weather problems. In my mind, right along, this banquet was to take place on a Wednesday night. <laughs> so last night, I'm packing, retiring early so that I'd be nice and fresh to come to Appleton today. And I get a call from Bill Smith, and he said, Roland, where are you? We've been waiting for you at the airport. So now you can see that I'm no longer a general manager, and that's what happens. You can't be a general manager if you can't get your days straight. Joe Garagiola, Jr. is the general manager of the 
Diamondbacks. How many people know who the Arizona Diamondbacks really are? <laughs> Robin Yount does. He lives in Phoenix. <laughs> You'll be hearing from us. We don't know what league we'll be in, American League or National League, but in 1998, we'll be playing Major League Baseball. We're not a softball team. We're not a hockey team. <laughs> we're a baseball team. My association to Appleton dates back to the early 50s. I had just joined the Boston Braves organization, and the Boston Braves had a working agreement with Appleton. Bob Beesman was the business manager, and Judge Parnell was connected. And as a matter of fact, I made one of my first mistakes in baseball. John Mullen, who was the farm director, had given me the title of assistant secretary for any of our farm clubs to execute the minor league contracts. And one of the young players who had just joined the organization had signed his name in the line for club official. And when the contract came across, I signed it where the player was supposed to sign. The contract went through the National Association, came up to Appleton, and Bob Beesman called John Mullen. He says, who's this new player we have named Roland Hemond? John says, who? He says, he can't play a lick. He said, don't worry, he's not reporting to Appleton. But I almost fulfilled my desire as a youngster to become a professional player and play in Appleton. But there have been some great players here, and the many players that you have supported on and off the field plays a major role in where I am today and some of the successes that I've had. I want to express my deep gratitude to many of you who had these minor league players to your home, some of them living in your homes, and the affection you showed them and the support. Because I run into many players who have played at Appleton, and through the years, they have nothing but praise for how they were treated here and how kind you were to them. I was in Colorado Springs recently for a, a roast of Rich Gossage, and Rich brought it up about how much he enjoyed it here in Appleton. I guess the fact that he was 18 and two that year also played a role why he was so happy. But he made the jump from Appleton to the major leagues the next year. Terry Forster had done the same thing the previous year and bought Johnson the same thing before. You know, many times you sign players and you're not comfortable as to where you're sending them to break into the major league ranks. But boy, I had utmost confidence whenever a player was headed for Appleton. I remember when Bill Vec, Mike's father, had seen Harold Baines play Little League Baseball in Eastern Shore, Maryland. And when Bill acquired the White Sox, he says, there's a youngster in Eastern Shore who has one of the greatest swings I've seen. Now, he says, the last time I saw him play a role, and he was around 11 or 12. <laughs> so make sure that we scout him well. Well, Paul Richards went to see him. Walt Widmayer, one of our top scouts, so Harold, Benny Huffman, Leo Labasia, and they all put the stamp of approval on him that we should draft Harold Baines. And then I asked Paul Richards, I said, Paul, do you think he's going to make a real good major league player? He said, Roland, all he has to do is find the ballpark. And he found Goodland Field. This was his first stop. And the next year went to Knoxville, the next year Iowa, and from then on to the major leagues and a long career. And what a thrill it was for me this past year, late in the season, to be on the grounds of Camden Yards by a home plate presenting Harold Baines with a silver bat, commemorating the fact that he had just hit his 300 home run in the major leagues. Harold has never changed the same quiet, humble, capable clutch hitter that he was when he showed up here and continues to be and is now rejoining the White Sox. But when I go through names like Bart Johnson and Lamar Hoyt and Jerry Hairston and Ron Kittle and Greg Walker, I mean, on and on, Ron Cockerweiss and so many others who wore the Appleton Fox uniform proudly, manager John Bowles who did such a great job with them, Steve Novarita now in the front office. One of my great rewards in my profession is seeing young people do well, join the professional ranks and become major league players, and some of them go on to All-Stars and Hall of Fame, and also the front office people. And there are four people here tonight, of which I have great pride to have been associated with. And I can foresee all four of them, four of them becoming general managers in the major leagues in the future. John Bowles, Steve Novarita, Billy Smith, and Mike Vec. 
I have three others who are Major League General Managers today with whom I've been associated, and they have said that I have played some, some role of some sort in helping them in their careers, and that's Dave Dombrowski of the Florida Marlins, Doug Melvin of the Texas Rangers, and Walt Jockety of the St. Louis Cardinals. So when you make the rounds of this baseball world and you see people represent our game so well, how good it makes you feel, because this is the greatest game in the world. And tonight, to see Joe Hauser in the audience really thrills me. Joe, that was a tremendous article written by a writer from Los Angeles this past summer. Bill Pachi, I believe is his name. I read every single word of it, enjoyed it thoroughly, and it brought back such great memories. And I was glad to find out where you were located. And I do hope you did receive my letter. It didn't have a complete address, but I figured if I put Joe Hauser someplace in Wisconsin, they would find you. <laughs> I might ask if there's a lady in the audience here tonight. Is Pauline Wesley here by chance? I guess not. In 1953, Pauline Wesley represented the Wisconsin State League at the baseball convention as Miss Wisconsin Baseball League. I took a shine to her. <laughs> Flew back to Milwaukee. Her mother made sure that she sat in the three seaters that we had in the that side of the plane. Now I think it was two and then it was an aisle in those days and then my seat. In any event, Pauline Wesley, I've never seen since, but she was a gorgeous young lady from Green Bay, and I just thought maybe she'd show up tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you who was runner-up to Pauline Wesley in that contest. Kathy Grant, who later became Mrs. Bing Crosby. So you know, People told me later, they said, Roland, you do have a good eye for talent. <laughs> John Fabre, while I have you here, my wife gave me instructions before I left Phoenix this morning. She said, Roland, do you think there's a chance that you can get some Super Bowl tickets now that Green Bay has been eliminated and you're going to the vicinity of Green Bay? John, I'll see you on the way out. I'm running out of things to say. You know, it's overwhelming to come back and be amongst friends that you haven't seen for quite some time. And that's why I was so anxious to get here last night to be with two of my dearest friends, Milk Dryer and Helen Dryer. Since I failed them last night, I'm gonna stay an extra day and not leave for Baltimore till the following day, whatever day that is. <laughs> and Robin Young, one of the first speakers said that you brought tears to his eyes. Well, I'll tell you one thing, you brought tears to my eyes often, too. <laughs> Whenever we played the Brewers, I'd always say, gee, I hope we don't see Robin Yount and Paul Molitor in the ninth inning. But no matter which way you played it, they always showed up in the clutch and they delivered time and time again two of the greatest players I've seen in my career. I want to be there at Cooperstown the day you enter Cooperstown when you are inducted. <laughs> because you displayed on the ball field in a great manner on how the game should be played. Never, never did I ever see Robin Young hit a ground ball and not go full blast all out to first base, thinking extra base and always playing aggressive baseball from the time he took the field till the final out. But you know, on second thought, Robin, looks to me like you can still play you, you live in Phoenix. The Arizona Diamondbacks opened in 1998. 
You can get in Cooperstown five years after you're through with the Diamondbacks, and you can name the position. <laughs> now, that's not tampering, right? He's not under contract with the Brewers, is he still? Would Bud Seeley get mad at me tonight? I hope not. He's another dear friend who won that nice guy award. Well, I want to thank the Miller Brewing Company also for making this award possible. And since it is such a great evening and Milk Dryer is having his birthday, I think it's time to wish him a happy birthday. We have a cake for him. And I also have an Arizona Diamondback cap for him. So make sure he wears it around town. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we post another great episode or interview. Download the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for your support.